Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan Bitterman and welcome back to part 2 of this Valentine's Day special. Now before we get started, um, you're going to need baking powder. Last time you saw the baking soda and the vinegar, you can just ignore that. Baking powder is what you're actually going to need. So here are the things you're going to need. You're going to need uh, 2 sticks of butter, roughly about 8 ounces, unsalted. You're going to need your baking powder, obviously. You're going to need bleached flour. You gotta make sure it's bleached. For some reason, if it's not bleached, it's not gonna work. You're gonna need some salt. It's supposed to be kosher salt, but if you use about like half of what the kosher is in the recipe, you'll be good. You gotta use some vanilla extract, like we used in the last video. Some eggs, and of course, heavy whipping cream. Make sure you got all the proper tools, like the measuring cups and all that. You're gonna need sugar, like lots and lots of sugar, believe me. So get your bowl out and put those 8 ounces of butter in, roughly 2 sticks of butter. Um, if you saw in the last video I got 3 packets of this, I didn't know. Alright, so we're going to put that over to the side for now and we're going to get the sugar. We got to measure about seven ounces of sugar, which is about one cup. So you're gonna wanna mix all the dry ingredients first, put it all in the same bowl. And then later we'll move on to the wet ingredients. So you're going to take the baking powder. Again, baking powder, not baking soda. Completely different things. Wish I would have known that before. But here we are now. You're going to want to get about two teaspoons of baking powder. Make sure to level it off so you don't get too much. All right, now we're gonna put that off to the side one more time. We're gonna take out our bleached flour. Roughly going to have about 11 ounces of bleached cake flour. Now, this is about two and three fourths of a cup. So, it's a lot of flour. We're gonna add a lot of flour to this. So I used a smaller scoop to measure it out just so it could be easier because I didn't have to put the whole thing into the bag. So there's one cup done. As you can see, it's already a lot. Um, you're gonna get a lot of cookies with this recipe, so you might wanna do about half of it if you're only gonna do some for yourself. If you have a big family, go ahead and do the whole recipe. Add some salt here, roughly about one and one fourth of a teaspoon, but of course, I didn't follow the recipe. Now, yeah, this is where I made a mess. I don't recommend doing this. Um, here I struggled. It struggled to mix. It got everywhere for good reason. It just would not mix. So I thought, 
I'm just gonna put it off to the side for now. I started mixing it here and around here is the time where I completely forgot and remembered that there are actually two sticks of butter in there. Um, they're not warm or anything, really cold and hard so they weren't really mixing with anything so I thought chopping them up might do the trick. Yeah, I was wrong. So I put that aside and decided to use my bare hands. Um, again, they were cold, so I had to mush them up, add some heat to them, uh, make sure to get it mixed in. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this. I recommend just heating up the butter a little bit and actually mixing it pretty good in there. But this is what I had to do. We're gonna start doing the wet ingredients now. So you're gonna take about two ounces of egg white, which is about one fourth of a cup, or two large eggs. So you can see me separating the egg yolk and the egg white. And like the recipe said, about two large eggs is about what you're gonna need. So you're gonna add your vanilla extract, roughly two teaspoons of it. Make sure to go slowly this time so I wouldn't overflow and mess it up like I did the last time. I'm gonna add one ounce of heavy cream, which is about two tablespoons. I would recommend to mix it until it all looks as one. And I added everything all at once, which is another thing you're not supposed to do. But I did it anyways. And so, here it is. Not me thinking that everything's all blended. It, it went well at first. I started using the mixer, thought it would be fine to do so. But then it started getting hard and it started going everywhere. It was very clumpy, not really, not really wanting to move and stick to each other. So thought I'd scrape it off and try again. And of course that didn't work. And so I tried again. I'm trying to cover up some of that splash because the one to make it easier for me. But again didn't quite do the job. So I decided to use my hands again. So it wasn't as gross as you may think. Bear in mind I did wash my hands and I was planning on being the only one eating these. But yeah, I tried to mix it up as good as I could but it came out clumpy, not looking too well. It didn't really look like dough as you can see from this shot right here. You can see the different clumps and ways. It's not really mixed together, sticking to each other. So I thought I would add more of the wet mixture. So I did follow the same recipe. It's all the same from here. The eggs, the, the cream, the vanilla extract. It's gonna work. This time I mixed it because I thought that had something to do with it. And the, the recipe also says to put it in little bits at a time, so I put in a little bit, I put in about half at first, and then I was going to put the other half in later. So I went straight with my hands this time, didn't even try to do the mixer. It started sticking to each other a lot more, it was very gooey, it was very sticky, actually. But 
you can start to see it is actually starting to look more like dough. Now I try to mix it again, and here is where stuff became a problem for me. It just started going up. It just did not like the blender. So it's stuck on there. I thought I could get it off the spoon very easily. For the most part, I got, I got some of it off. So I thought I'd use my hands to get the rest of the dough off. So I decided to disconnect the mixers? I don't know what they're called. And take that dough off and just put it on there. Set that off to the side. So I use my hands again for this. And you can really tell it looks like dough. It's actually really sticky. Probably should have greased up the pan because it was like sticking to the pan as you can tell here I scraped some of it off but yeah you can tell it actually looks like dough now I probably could have used less of the liquid but uh, I did it anyways So you're going to get your cookie sheet now, and you're going to want to grease it up. I use Pam, not sponsored, to just grease it up, fit over the sink so I wouldn't get anything else messy. Put lots and lots of that on there. So you're going to take your dough that you made, and you're just going to get tiny balls of it. You're going to roll it up really good. That was a little bit too big for my liking, so I split it in half and put it down. Now I just rolled it into balls for this go and I just put that on the cookie sheet. I, have, I made about eight on each cookie sheet just because I didn't want them to hit the edges. I wanted them to be round. I didn't want them to hit each other either. I was very satisfied with how this was so I decided to put it in the oven. You're going to want to preheat it at about 350 and then when you put the cookies in, you're going to want to put it in for about 15 minutes. Here's a nice little time lapse of how that sort of looked for those 15 minutes. Now, around here is the time where I started worrying because they weren't flattening at all. Um, as you can tell, they were actually rising and keeping their very upward and round form. I thought this was a complete fail here. So you're going to take your frosting. This is how the frosting looks. Now, you're supposed to wait 24 hours after making this frosting. So we waited 72. So here you just see me mixing it. It kind of hardened on the outside. Um, I made purple and pink. And it looks, looks the same. And as you can see in here, the cookies were burnt on the bottom. Like completely burnt. put some frosting on there. Very droopy frosting. Uh, not at all how I expected or how they're supposed to turn out. So this time, this go, I decided to keep it the same size but flatten them a little bit. Maybe they'll get flattened out and not rise up so much and I can have the traditional loft house cookie look. Took them out and they were more golden brown on the bottom. Sort of how you would want the cookie to be. These aren't ordinary cookies. Wouldn't want that like that. Now I put them on the plate and you know, 
set them up. Now I'm thinking because of the more mixture I added, the liquid, it made it rise up more and become hard. Now here I did it more, I made it more flattened. That way it could be more like a traditional log house cookie. I wanted that traditional look. So I put the frosting while those were baking, or the third batch was baking. And again, you can tell it's very, very droopy. I did half in purple, half in pink. Uh, the purple, in my opinion, was a lot more droopy, which I wouldn't understand why. Maybe it's because I added more food coloring because I had to put in blue and red in order to get the purple look. But the purple just seemed a lot more droopy. I did everything exactly. They came from the same batch. Now here's some sprinkles. I didn't really have any regular sprinkles. Um, the only thing I could find was these star sprinkles. So they're good enough. Their sprinkles are sprinkles. So I was just being very light with the sprinkles here, trying to get it on the frosting, stick it on. Now I don't know if you would have waited longer that the frosting would have hardened and become more like the traditional loft house frosting but it didn't have that time and I could always make more and find out but who knows when that'll be so yeah the third batch was done and they were definitely more flat but they still look the same and I'm pretty sure that had to do with the mixture that I made that I added too much of the liquid made it too doughy I guess they became hard and they rose a lot. But here they are a lot more flat, which is kind of what we wanted. So flip these over, and they were a bit darker than the last one. Not as golden brown, but still not burnt. Still pretty good. So I decided to add these to the plate as well. So I decided to add a little bit more of the frosting here. As you can see here, the purple drooped down to the side and very droopy. Don't know why. So this time around, I decided to make two larger cookies uh, and put them in to see how that would turn out. So they came out. They got very big because they rose. Tried to make a little heart design on that one, didn't turn out too well, but as you can see, golden brown, very good. And I cut one open and wanted to see how it looked because I took them out a little bit early so I could get that golden brown look. And you can see there's a little bit of a wet layer in there, but not extremely wet. It's actually very cooked. It just looks wet. So I decided to put some frosting on the big cookie. So yeah, try to get this one a little bit perfect. And again, frosting is very droopy. Not as droopy as the purple one, but still it will fall over the side as you can start to see there. So I just put some sprinkles on top just to make it look perfect. You know, add that little pizzazz, a little bit more sweetness there, even though probably don't need it with all that sugar. I had, I had fun making this. It was actually very interesting to do. I wish I could have got it all out on Valentine's Day. Uh, there's always next year, I guess, um, a couple more holidays yet to come, so maybe I'll do something for that. Probably not in the cooking manner, considering I sucked at it. Now, the cookies were actually very, very good. Not gonna lie, it wasn't, they weren't half bad, but they weren't traditional loft house cookies, so I consider it a fail. Tell me what you think. Do you think I failed? Let me know. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!